looking at our schedule and thinking, man, you know, we got we got to go through New York. We got a double header. We got a lot of baseball to play here. And if we could just keep our head above water, you know, we were going to be in pretty good shape because we were kind of beat up. And then you look up three weeks later and you haven't lost a game. That's hard to imagine. And they got to Kansas City. And once again, it was going to be 100 degrees all weekend long. We walked into the clubhouse and there was a Papa shot and there was a DJ. Not many managers in baseball, if any, would put a Papa shot machine in the middle of a clubhouse and partake in taking shots on the Papa shot machine and challenging his players to competition there. And it was just to show the guys, hey, we we know you're tired, but we appreciate your effort. And they had a lot of fun. Kluber enjoyed it, like watching them. Then he went out and dealt. Like sometimes the hitters tend to stick with the hitters and the pitchers stick with the pitchers. Everybody gelled, everybody hung out. We all went to dinner together. That was definitely the reason, part of the reason that why we were so good. Urshela finds oh, the hole, yeah. his fourth RBI of the night as Diaz comes home to make it 8-4 Cleveland. We didn't play well in the first half, and we were trying to get separation in the division, and we were trying to punch our ticket to the playoffs. So, You can be outstanding the night before and then wake up for a day game the next day, and it's like you forgot how to play. I mean, that's just the nature of baseball. When you see Tito at 2 o'clock p.m., you don't know if his team won by five runs last night or gave it up in the ninth inning. He truly is the same person day in and day out. The remarkable thing is in the moment, well, as the games were just ticking by, it seemed almost normal because of the incredible atmosphere that Tito creates in the clubhouse where every day we show up, there's an expectation of winning. I happen to look at a lot of the land and I go, would you look at what he was doing? How he mixed and matched is being able to allow those extra players, get a couple of innings, get a couple of their bats, and that they feel part of the club. There's nothing better than when you come to the park and you feel like you're gonna win. Up the middle, Lindo to the diving stop from his glove, flips to Ramirez on the first and inning ending double play. That feeling is something I think every player chases after. For that stretch of games, we were hitting everybody and we were punching everybody. The payoff pitch. Swung on it, miss. He struck him out to end the game. When we knew how good our guys were throwing the ball, uh, if we could score early, it was going to be game over. Every night when Tito handed the ball to the next starter, they did not want to let their teammates down, and they just went out, and it's almost like a game of, oh, you did that? Well, watch me do this. Swung on and missed. He strikes him out. That's seven Ks now for Clevenger. Clev went from, this kid's got, he's a prospect, he's got a chance, to, oh boy, he's he's up there with Kluber and those guys. Fastball coming back, that's the one he drilled here. That was awesome. I just always remember feeling, I always felt like we were up 4 nothing, and that's a really good way to play baseball. Now, if we can find a way to recreate that and do that every year, <laughs> we'd sign up for it. What we did, especially during the streak, is once we got a lead, we, we weren't satisfied. We kept on uh, stepping on the gas pedal and then tried to extend those leads the best we could. Jan Goh sends a long fly ball. Deep left field, Lariano back, he's out of room, it's out of here! Sometimes we scored five runs in an inning, and then you go, I'd like to be in that dugout over there. But because they had won 14 in a row the year before, once they got hot, we knew that this team had the ability to get on a run and, and reel off win after win after win. Going into the clubhouse after like maybe two weeks of just straight winning, dominating, and. I was like, damn, we're, I think we're on a pretty good streak here. For the first time in the long history of the Cleveland Indians, they have a 15 game winning streak. What makes it that they're so unique that won 14 last year, this year 15? What do you think that, who's doing it for them? I, I think it's a team effort. I think the pitching has been great. I think when your leadoff hitter can start the game off with a triple and get driven in right away and get a four run lead, it helps the pitching. I think they help each other in a, in a great, contagious way. What makes you think that? No, I just think, like, it's overall, everybody's contributing. Everybody's trying to play to win. Everybody's continuing to do their thing, and the preaching staff continues to carry us. And I remember after Frankie got through, like, three questions, he looked at me and handed me my mic back, and he's kind of like, and after we walked off the field, he looked at me and goes, this is way hard. Your job's harder than I thought it was. And I was like, you just keep hitting home runs and making plays at shortstop. I'll come up with the questions. 20th game was another one where I remember that being 20 wins in a row is a lot. Like, we haven't lost in almost three weeks. That's an odd feeling to have. Ball game! A record-tying night in
in Cleveland, the Indians have matched the American League record. They have won 20 in a row. There is an absolute sea of humanity trying to get into the ballpark at the last minute here tonight. On Thursday for the 22nd game, we had nearly 31,000 fans. Again, this is mid-September. Um, our press box, it was almost like a wild card game uh, from the standpoint of media attention. So now the last chance for Cleveland to try and either tie it or win it. There are certain players in sports that thrive when the game is on the line and the spotlight is solely on them. Down to your last out, you got the right guy in the right spot. Uh, you know, Kelvin Herrera, who was on the mound, he was throwing, but he was having a great year. He was throwing the ball really, really well. We had this like collective feeling of like, well, if we can get somebody on, we'll figure out a way to win this thing. Two down, bottom of the ninth, two, two pitch, swung on, line drive, deep left field, back goes Gordon, he's at the wall, he leaps, he can't make the catch! Coming around third with the tying run is Gonzalez. In the second is Lindor. The Indians have tied it down to their last strike in the bottom of the ninth. Lindor always seems to have those moments in his back pocket. Clevenger was real strong on this. He goes, when he comes up, we expect that from Frankie Lindor. You're hitting it to Alex Gordon. He's going to come down with him. I mean, the guy comes up with everything. Man alive, that place was bedlam. And we've got extra innings. Why not? The round ball headed towards short Lindor with the flip to Ramirez. We'll go to the bottom of the 10th. Man, there was a cockiness and a swagger there that when he got in the box, you can just feel it. Ramirez lines one right center field into oh, the gap. And Ramirez is going for two. Here's the throw. He is safe. He took the best guys that the Indians faced with their best stuff, and he turned it around like it was just four o'clock batting practice. Jay is 0 for 3, walked back in the sixth inning. Not only his performance, but he carried himself like a big leaguer. And then when we just kept on winning, I know, you know, after two weeks of this thing, he goes, he goes man, I love it here, man. You guys don't lose. <laughs> in Jay's case, we spent a chance to know him. We played against him a bunch. We had, you know, a lot of players that played with him. And everyone came back and said, this guy will fit in seamlessly in your clubhouse. This is hit to deep left center field. It is gone. It was a post game and I was going to try to get Edwin to come on air. And if you knew Edwin didn't come on the air a lot and I go up to him after the game, I'm like, Edwin, and he's like, Jay, he goes, not today, go get the interpreter. And he's got this deep voice and Jay Bruce snaps his head around and he had been there literally four or five days. And he goes, interpreter? He goes, dude, you've known English since you were 17. Get stand up and do the interview. He, I mean, in a short time in Cleveland, he had some big swings, memorable swings. We loved him. You know, we cherished him as a teammate, and, and he was big for us. Rip to right. It's down the line. Fair ball. Around third, Ramirez will score. It's a walk-off for number 22. It felt like the whole stadium was about to collapse on itself when, <laughs> when Jay Bruce hit the walk-off. It felt like October. There, there's no other way to describe it. When that place is rocking, it's one of the most hostile environments for opposing teams. When he hit that ball and then Jay Bruce got that, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, because I remember thinking, we may not lose. Yeah, you, you do get that feeling that we may never lose again. It's a, it's a rare feeling to have because usually in baseball, it feels the other way. Like, are we ever gonna win again? You know, this was uh, probably the toughest one we've had. Um, you know, being down all game and down to our last strike and, you know, Francisco coming up big there. And then, you know, uh, I felt good when we had another opportunity. I think it was the largest uh, TV audience for Sports Time Ohio in the history. I think it was over a 20 rating for a regular season game. And I think the thing that I will never forget is the game after the streak. So they win the 22 games. The next night, the streak comes to an end. It's the only time in my career I've ever seen this where the team that lost came out of the dugout and saluted the fans. Look at Tito and the Indians giving a tip of the cap to the crowd. And I remember, I have this one time, I remember walking and, I, and, and like trying to soak it in because I was like, damn, man, this is like, this is baseball history. And Cleveland is a special city to play. That hat tip was for the fans and for the fans only because we definitely couldn't have gotten through 22 games uh, without a loss without them. I mean, if anybody does it again, I hope it's us because it's fun living through it. It was a fun ride. 22 